स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Okay, so let's continue talking about free groups today. So recall we have already defined the free group on two generators which we called A and B, but there is uh, nothing really special about uh, a group with just those two generators. More generally, we can talk about the free group F uh, generated by any set S. So here S can in fact be any set finite or infinite doesn't really matter and we can talk about the the free group generated by that set as follows uh, so of course it really only makes sense to talk about non empty sets for the free group uh, so how does one how does one define it well we just follow the same steps that we followed when we defined the free group on two generators which are the following so recall what did we do first we looked at uh, the augmented set s hat so I will do the same thing here, the augmented set S hat is defined to be S union another set S prime and what is S prime? S prime is a, is a set which has the same number of elements as S but we will call the elements as, uh, so let us say it is a set whose elements look like X prime where X is any element of the alphabet S. So recall S was the alphabet and S prime is just sort of the primed alphabet just got primes on top of the alphabets okay that is the augmented set S hat then uh, a starting point was the monoid which is the set of all words using the alphabet S hat both letters and their primes so we considered this and we know that uh, this is not quite a group but it has got a very useful operation that of concatenation you, the same definition applies as before and the concatenation has the following properties that it is an associative operation and it has got an identity element which in this case as before is just the empty word. Okay, So uh, well what do we need to do next? We need to define an equivalence relation like we did in the case of the free group on two generators. So this is what we achieved by means of what we call the basic rewriting rules. So what, what were these? These rules are the, the following, if you recall what it was before it said you know A A prime can be replaced with the empty word, A prime A, similarly B B prime, B prime B, each of these can be replaced with the empty word. Okay? So here it is the same thing, instead of A B you have many more alphabets. So let me write this out uh, in general as follows, whenever I see an alphabet X next to the alphabet X prime. I can replace this word of length 2 by the, the empty word. Similarly, if I see x prime followed by an x, I am allowed to replace it with the empty word. Okay? And in fact, the way we wrote the basic rewriting rules, they are also the rules in reverse. So x x prime is replaceable by the empty word, x prime x, I can replace it. These are two rules and the opposite rules also are available, I can replace the empty word with x x prime or I can replace the empty word with x prime x. So there are in this case four basic rewriting rules for each alphabet in S. Okay? And we define the, the following thing, so this is for every x in S and we defined an equivalence relation on words as follows. So we have an equivalence relation which is the following that two words w1 and w2 are said to be equivalent or related to each other if I can go from w1 to w2. So if there exists uh, words z1, z2, zk between w1 and w2 in this way. So let me write this as if there exists a chain of words such that uh, each arrow is a basic rewriting rule is obtained. 
So, each of these arrows which connects these successive words is obtained via some basic rewriting rule. Okay, in other words, by successively replacing x x primes by m t or x prime x by m t or the reverses of those rules, you can go from the word w1 to the word w2 okay, and just like what we saw in our earlier example. And as before, the definition of the free group um, is g is defined to be the set of equivalence classes. Uh, of the set of all words uh, under the equivalence relation tilde. Okay. So, this as before is going to be our set G and uh, the operation is, is the same thing. So, if I take two words W1 and W2 and I look at their equivalence classes in G. So, I look at W1 in G well, I look at the equivalence class of W1, that is an element of this set G, this is an element of G. The product is defined as before to be, you take the concatenation of the two words and then you look at the equivalence class of the concatenation. Okay. Now, since it is uh, the verification of the properties is very closely analogous to what we have seen already for the case of two alphabets. So, I am just going to leave this as an exercise for you to try your hand at uh, how these arguments work in general. So, here, here are the various exercises I suppose. Uh, one is show that this is an really an equivalence relation is an equivalence relation. So, that is one and two that under this uh, product uh, that I just defined. So, G with this product dot is a group. Okay, in other words, the product is associative, it has an identity and most importantly, it has inverses. Okay. And you will observe that like before, if I take the word just a single alphabet X coming from the set S and it is a word of length 1, I look at its equivalence class and somehow this is how we motivated the entire definition. So, we needed to find an inverse for this, this word x and like in the earlier case, this inverse is just the word x prime. So, this is for all x in s. So, maybe that is part 3 of the exercise. Show that in this group g, the inverse of the, the singleton word, um, the word of length 1 x is in fact the word x prime, okay? also a word of length 1. Okay. In fact, that will be one of the things you will show when you show that this is a group. Okay. So, uh, this is sort of how you define free groups in general. So, G is what is called the free group on the set S and the notation we introduced was this sort of curly F of S. Okay. So, let us uh, get our hands on an example. So, here is sort of something even simpler than the free group on two alphabets. We could look for the free group on a, on a single alphabet or a single generator. So, suppose my set S has just a single element A. Okay? And so, now I try to understand what the free group on this single alphabet uh, A looks like. And here is my claim. this free group on a single alphabet is actually isomorphic to the group of integers under addition. In other words, it is an infinite cyclic group. Okay. So, so let us prove this. Um, so, I am going to prove my claim. So, observe what is it that uh, the, the free group, I mean how did, how did we um, construct it? We will first have to look at words in the alphabet A and A prime. So, the typical word here will look like some A's and then some A primes and some A's again and some number of A primes and so on and so forth. right? 
so this is this is all the word can have can have a's and a primes which occur in some order some number of times and so on of course the words all words are finite so it it ends somewhere so this is a typical word in s hat and then the free group itself is obtained by looking at the equivalence relation on the set of words in which you are allowed to sort of collapse an a a prime and make it empty or expand an empty word and make it a a prime or a prime a and so on so uh, we however need to show that the free group is actually isomorphic i claim to the just the ordinary group of of integers okay and intuitively it's sort of clear why because whenever you you see a string like this of a's and a primes what's of course going to happen is that you know every time you see an a and an a prime together so for example this a and a prime uh, the basic rewriting rule will say you can actually erase it right so this this sort of goes away now again an another a and an a prime end up being together so you can get rid of them using the basic rewriting rule Uh, so every time you see an a and an a prime, off off they go. A a prime, uh, a a prime. Okay. So let me just complete this word to something. So let's suppose these last few letters were a prime, a prime, a prime, a. Okay. So again, I I scan this and I notice that here's an a prime a, which again can be made into. Uh, an empty word so i get rid of all these so observe that every time a day an a and an a prime occur together you can get rid of them and finally after you have done this process sufficiently many times i mean as many times as you can you will find that the word that you finally get has only a's or has only a primes okay it has some number of a's or it has some number of a primes and so that number of a's that you are left with that's really the integer that uh, we are going to map that word to okay so observe to uh, construct an isomorphism what we need to do is to construct a map from the the free group to the integers or from the integers to the free group okay so let's let's do it in this order so we'll try and construct a map from the free group to the integers okay now of course a free group is so this is what i want i want to construct a isomorphism of groups okay so i want to construct a group isomorphism but as an intermediate step let me try doing this on at the level of words so let me look at all words in a and a prime and define a map from that to the integers okay so i'll call that map phi and here's my my map so i write my word w it's some a's and a primes as i said some bunch of a's and some bunch of so bunch of a primes now my map does the following it maps w to the number of a's in w so it's the number of a in the word w minus the number of a primes in w okay number of a prime in w Okay, so I don't want to put that also in quote, so probably confused. So let let me get rid of this as well. So let's do one thing. Let me just put this in a different color. So I'll say it's a number of the alphabet A, number of occurrences of the alphabet A minus the number of occurrences of the alphabet A prime. Okay, so this is of course an integer, could be a positive or a negative integer, and let's see what properties this map has. So observe if I have a word W. So here's the first. key observation that suppose i have a word w and suppose i perform a basic rewriting rule on w okay so i i transform w to some other word so maybe let's say if i have a word w1 and i perform a basic rewriting rule so let's say basic rewriting which means what have i done i have either collapsed an a a prime and made it empty or you know a prime a empty or expanded an empty into an a a prime observe the basic rewriting rule always has the same number of a's it it either collapses it either removes the you know one a and one a prime or it increases the number of a's by one and number of a primes by one okay in other words the basic rewriting rule does not change this difference that we are talking about the number of a's minus a primes 
remains constant ok. So, if w1 and w2 are related like this then certainly this number phi of w1 and the number phi of w2 are necessarily the same ok. Now, as a corollary to this observation if I have two words which are equivalent under the equivalence relation which means I can go from w1 to w2 by means of a sequence of basic rewriting rules I may not be able to go in one step still the same property holds because it holds at every step ok. So, what does this mean two equivalent words necessarily have the same value of w. So, I can in fact define a map. So, what this means is that I can think of phi as actually giving me a map from the set of equivalence classes ok which is what we call the free group. In other words given a word w look at its equivalence class I can associate to this equivalence class the number phi of w ok and this new map I will call as phi bar okay, it is a map from uh, f of s to z ok. So, observe this is well defined in other words it does not depend on the representative w that I picked for the equivalence class ok. Why? Because of what we just said what we just said above if instead of w1 I had picked w2 as my representative or maybe here if I had instead of w1 I picked something equivalent to w1 then the value of phi would have remained the same ok. So, I can just go ahead and pick any representative of my class and define my map to just be phi of that ok. So, this is the number of a's minus number of a primes this defines uh, gives me a well defined map from the free group on s to z s remember is just a single term here. So, firstly it is well defined and now I claim that this is actually uh, the isomorphism that we want ok. So, first let us show that it is a group homomorphism. So, recall what does homomorphism mean I must take two elements w1 and w2 in my group f of s I should multiply them out in the group and then my answer should equal phi bar of w1 times phi bar of w2 but times is the product on the right hand side is computed in in the the group z it is computed in the the range of this map. In other words that operation here is just a plus the usual addition in uh, the integers. So, this is phi of w 1 phi bar of w 1 plus phi bar of w 2 this is what I need to prove. So, this is what it means to say that phi bar is a homomorphism ok. So, let us compute each side and see whether this equality holds. So, let us check what the left hand side is by definition this is phi bar evaluated on the product is the concatenation of these words. Now, look at this concatenated word w 1 star w 2 phi bar of this equivalence class is just going to be the number of a's in the number of a's in the concatenation minus the number of a bar a primes in the concatenation ok. But observe the concatenation of two words is just put w 1 first and then write w 2 next to it right. So, if I am trying to count how many a's occur in the concatenation well I just have to see how many a's occur in w 1. I may see how many a's occur in w 2 and it is just the sum of those two numbers ok. Similarly, the number of a primes in the concatenation is just the sum of the number of a primes in, in w 1 and w 2 ok. okay. So, what this means is that uh, this answer is nothing but phi bar of w 1 which means the number of a's minus a primes in w 1 plus phi bar of w 2 the number of a's minus a primes in w 2 ok. So, that is uh, that is the proof of the homomorphism property ok. Now, let us look at uh, property B 
which is uh, 1 to 1 s. So, let us prove 1 to 1 now and then we will prove on 2. So, why is this map 1 to 1? Since it is a homomorphism, we just need to check the following property that if a word maps, if the equivalence class of a word maps to the identity element of z. So, the identity under the addition remember is 0. So, suppose some equivalence class maps to 0, then we need to prove, then we need to prove that this equivalence class must be the identity element of the free group. And remember, so this should be the identity element of f of s, which if you remember and which you probably checked is nothing but the equivalence class of the empty word. Okay. So, let us prove this. So, let us analyze what this means for a second. So, we are trying to understand uh, what it means for phi bar of a word to be 0. Okay. By definition, phi bar is the number of a's minus a primes. So, the fact that phi bar of a word is 0 just means that uh, the word has an equal number of a's and a primes. Okay. So, let us uh, go here. Uh, the word w has as many a's as a's, a primes has an equal number of a the alphabet a and the alphabet a prime. Okay. So, what does that mean? It means that if you scan this this word from left to right just like we were doing before. So, let me write a word like this a prime a prime a something like this maybe. So, this is what the word looks like it has an equal number of a's and a primes. So, uh, it has at least one a and a prime. Okay. Uh, as, uh, let us assume that the word is not empty. Okay. If the word is already empty, then you are done because you have to prove that finally, this word the equivalence class of w is just the equivalence class of the empty word. Okay. So, if w is not the empty word, then w looks like this in which there are at least uh, with let us say k occurrences of a's and k occurrences of a primes. Okay. Now, uh, where k is at least 1. Now, you scan the word from left to right. Okay. There has got to be at least one place where an a and an a prime occur next to each other. They occur consecutively. Right? That is uh, you really cannot avoid that if you have got k a's and k a primes and you know where I mean any word which has both a's and a primes already must have at least one position where an a and an a prime come next to each other. Okay. One way of saying it is you scan the word from left to right, uh, you look at the first letter if it is an a, then at some point you must get to an a prime. right? So, the place where it transitions from a to a prime, that place will have uh, a subword of the form a a prime. Okay. So, you pick uh, the the a and a prime coming next to each other it could be a a prime or a prime a. So, let us do this for example. So, find a place where I have a prime a and using the basic rewriting rule I get rid of that entirely. Okay. So, from this I can form another word in which so using a single basic rewriting rule what I have been able to do is to find another word in which still it has an equal number of a's and a primes, but that number has come down by 1. It is k minus 1 a's and k minus 1 a primes. Okay, now, repeat the argument. Again, if k minus 1 is at least uh, 1, then it means this word is not the, the empty word. That means, surely it has both a's and a primes. And again, find any one location where an a and an a prime come next to each other and you get rid of them using the basic rewriting rule. So, again I can do this. Okay, so, what have I generated? Another word, but now it is got k minus 2 occurrences of a's and k minus 2 occurrences of a primes okay, and so on. So, you can see that as long as this number k minus 1, k minus 2 etcetera 
as long as these numbers are at least one you can keep doing this so what it means is at some point you will be left with uh, the case when this number becomes zero this number keeps decreasing by one each time and at some point it's got to reach zero okay so what does that mean when it reaches zero it just means that the resulting word at the last step that you have has zero a's and zero a primes in other words this is just the empty word okay in fact in the one preceding step uh, the word must have had a single a and a single a prime so that word must have looked like either a a prime or a prime a okay that was the one preceding step and of course the possibilities for each step prior to that are, are many more okay but at the very end you are going to necessarily reach the empty word okay so what does that mean you can reach the empty word from the original word w right i have gone through a sequence of basic rewriting rules and i have gotten to the empty word which means that w is in fact uh, equivalent to the empty word in other words the equivalence class of w is the same as the equivalence class of the empty word okay which is what i wanted to prove so this proves uh, one to oneness and let's finally prove the ontoness so part 3 of the proof of isomorphism i need to show that this map phi bar is onto okay what does that mean i need to show that so recall phi bar as a map from f of s to z given any integer n i must show that there is some word some preimage right i must show that there is some word w whose equivalence class maps to n okay so this is very easy to manufacture so observe if n is uh, at least 1 then uh what is this word which maps to to the number n i can take w to be so, so let's write this out here if n is at least 1 i can take w to be the word which has a a a a a occurring n times okay if n is negative if n is minus 1 or lower i can take the word which which looks like a prime a prime a prime so now i should take minus n times or modulus of n times okay so observe this is the first word has uh, uh, if i look at phi bar just number of a's minus a primes it's n for the first word and because it's n minus 0 there are no a primes for the second word it's 0 minus n because there are no you know uh, it's 0 minus i mean not 0 minus n but rather 0 minus modulus of n Okay, so in this case, mod n is the same as minus n. So maybe I should write as Tucker's minus n times. So if we compute phi bar, you will again see it is n. And then finally, if n is zero, of course that's the easiest case. I can just take w to be the empty word, and uh, phi bar, the empty word, is of course just zero. Okay, so we have managed to show that uh, this is an isomorphism, and uh, so that's sort of a, a, a nice tractable example. but uh, sort of a thing to keep in mind is that as soon as you are so this this is done that proves our claim that f of a singleton the free group is just isomorphic to the group of integers but uh, as soon as the set s has two or more generators this becomes a, a vastly more complicated group okay if i take the the free group on two generators a and b then this is a, a a much much more complicated group than the group of integers for example okay in particular this is not going to be the group of uh you know it's not the group z2 for example so observe while this is isomorphic to z f of this is very far from being true okay so this is not at all the case okay so these groups are you know z2 is uh, is in fact an abelian group it's got sort of got two generators but it's an abelian group uh, f of ab the free group on two generators is of course uh, non abelian the word ab and the word ba in this free group uh, will turn out not to be in the same equivalence class okay so uh, in order to sort of better understand some properties like this of the free group so for example i just mentioned this is 
a non-abelian group. In other words, if I take the word AB in this group and I look at the word BA in this group, then the equivalence class of AB is not the same as the equivalence class of BA. So, I am talking about the, the free group here on two generators. Okay. So, to prove things like this, even basic facts about free groups, I mean you could prove it just from the definition for example, that there are no basic rewriting rules which will uh, help you go from here to there, but there is sort of a, a, a nice conceptual way of, of understanding these free groups and that is the notion of its universal property and that is something that we will take up in the next lecture. Thank you.